Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, today we will see uh, what is oncology, prostate cancer, the statistical concepts. So as I had shared a video for the ovarian cancer, um, what statistics are used. So let us see here in prostate cancer what kind of stats uh, are used. Right. So like I said in earlier video, uh, treatment depends on stage of the cancer. So here in prostate uh, cancer, there are uh, two treatments available commonly, which is localized and systematic. Now localized, there are two types of treatments available. One is surgery and one is uh, radio, radiation or radiotherapy. So as you know from earlier video that surgery is nothing but to remove either a cancer tumor or a tissue via operation or remove any infected organ via operation. So if you have seen my earlier um, prostate cancer, the basic concepts uh, video where I have completely explained the stage wise uh, increase of the difficulty in this disease cancer so if you haven't seen that video please go through it so that it depends on the stage one stage two stage three stage four so at which stage uh, this disease is based on that uh, the treatment is given uh, like i said earlier uh, if the disease is in the early stage like say stage one and two where the early symptoms are completely negligible you are not able to identify or see any signs or symptoms uh, if you're having this disease in your body at the stage of uh, stage one and stage two only when uh, this disease it uh, reaches to the stage three and four you uh, you come to know uh, the symptoms which you feel discomfort and uncomfort in your in your body uh, at that time when you when you reach a doctor uh, you might be able to uh, diagnose this cancer at a later stage which is stage 3 and stage 4 um, there you will come to know it's very uh, uh, difficult for the chances of survival because the cancer has almost spread it across across your body at stage 4 and to get a cure um, uh, is not um, that easy. It can be it can be treated uh, through localized and systematic uh, treatments, but uh, it cannot be hundred percent cured because this cancer is something like it can come back again uh, if it has been um, uh, removed from your body if the cancer tumor. Uh, tissues or the infected organs if they have been removed uh, from your body there might be chances of this cancer cells coming back again in your body so depends on how uh, your body reacts uh, to this disease and how is your uh, lifestyle and coming back to here is um, systematic which is nothing but uh, chemotherapy and hormone therapy uh, these two uh, treatments are used so in chemotherapy it is used after surgery to treat any residual diseases required now what do i mean by residual diseases like say uh, the first treatment would be surgery they have identified certain tissue or they have identified certain infected organ uh, near the prostate um, organ uh, they have removed it right but even after removing there might be some minute cancer cells available or scattered here and there near the prostate gland which cannot be removed through surgery so in that scenario chemotherapy uh, treatment is used uh, so that any remaining or leftover cancer cells they can be killed or they can be shrinked uh, via special medicines and um, that's how uh, the uh, chemotherapy is used right so that's what is the meaning is of residual disease if required now 
after surgery if a doctor uh, realizes that a patient needs a chemotherapy treatment only then it is recommended or if it has been treated at an early stage one where it has been uh, removed uh, everything is clear at the surgery level then only surgery uh, is given to the patient whereas if uh, looking at the condition of the disease in a specific patient where a case to case uh, uh, it differs the treatment right as to how uh, how, how condition is worsened in a specific patient so that's how the treatments are uh, given and the treatments are different from uh, different patients case to case depending on how your body is reacting or how your body is responding to the treatments so here uh, hormone therapy is nothing but to reduce your testosterone levels right so there are in females you have contraceptive pills uh, you can consume that so that your hormones in your body are are maintained uh, well uh, so that you know there is no disturbance in the in the hormones level in your body in in males uh, there are certain hormonal therapies where they they, they give some medicines uh, to reduce the testosterone levels right so typically uh, the cancer vaccine uh, this kind of proversion uh, radio pharmaceutical agents such as radium 223 chloride and the secondary hormone therapies such as these treatment names uh, and chemotherapies um, are added to the hormone therapy in sequence so there are only few vaccines which are available which can be treated to certain extent but it cannot be cured because there is no medicine available for uh, curing or healing of cancer disease but it can be treated to certain extent by removing cancerous cells from your body so that you know um, the survival chances of a specific patient uh, uh, increases rather than you know that patient uh, uh, if can, can die at an early stage if it has not treated so let's hope for the best we do get a medicine as far as possible yeah. okay so now uh, survival uh, rate uh, the relative survival rate compares people with the same type and stage of cancer to people in the overall population now usually five year uh, sur relative survival rate uh, kind of uh, terminology is used in statistics for doing the analysis as to what are the chances of a patient for survival now what does this mean is that men who don't have cancer are on average about 90% as likely as men who don't have that cancer to live for at least 5 years after being diagnosed so this is what uh, the specific um, meaning for a 5 year relative survival rate is and uh, it looks like how likely people with prostate cancer are to survive for a certain amount of time after their initial diagnosis or start of treatment compared with the expected survival of similar people without this cancer okay so uh, that's how it uh, compares uh, with those uh, people who don't have that cancer and that's how the definition of relative survival rate is right so usually this uh, terms and especially your uh, bar charts are used um, for uh, showing uh, stage wise uh, what is the five year uh, relative rate uh, for uh, this disease right yeah. okay now let's go through some examples like say first suppose i am having a clinical trial where the objective of the trial is to assess the safety and efficacy in say specific random treatment of patients with asymptomatic or minimal symptomatic metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer right so 
since it's a safety and efficacy uh, we we go through for the primary endpoint as the immune response to specific treatment now the first question would come for any new uh, biostatistician or a programmer as to who defines this primary endpoint and secondary endpoint especially in the statistics stream now what happens here is um, as you as you might have seen my video for a role of biostatistician in clinical trials it's the role of a biostatistician to uh, to uh, define or to generate the statistical analysis plan now that person biostatistician is responsible for designing the primary endpoint and the secondary endpoint in coordination with the sponsor and the business requirement as to uh, what parameters it could be and if a biostatistician has not understood as to uh, in a specific uh, trial uh, what are the primary endpoints and secondary endpoints then that biostatistician has to sit with the medical person or the clinical person or a doctorate who can explain uh, to a biostatistician as to what is this clinical trial about what is the objective whether to reduce the glucose level uh, in in your diabetes patient that's the objective and uh, to reduce the coughing and sneezing in the asthma related clinical trial and uh, whether to get the immune response to a specific treatment be it a cancer related study so once a bar statistician sits with the medical person or the principal investigator in understanding uh, in common layman's language as to what is the objective of this clinical trial only then uh, that bar statistician will be able to define the primary endpoints and the secondary endpoints in a clinical trial right okay so the secondary endpoints would be time to disease progression uh, is nothing but um, progression free survival it's a composite endpoint defined as disease progression in bone or soft tissues worsening pain or death it is measured in months from the time of study enrollment until the date disease has progressed then next would be your objective uh, response rate a uh, rate as defined by prostate uh, working uh, group 2 so next is your overall survival uh, which is the survival in months from the time of randomization or from the time of enrollment to the death so what was the period for that person of overall survival especially in your clinical trial or outside like say a patient has died uh, during the follow up period so that follow up date uh, will also be counted and here is your quality of life uh, scale results uh, will be measured by the fact p uh, validated questionnaire consisting of four sub scales physical social family emotional and functional and compared between treatment groups now like i said in earlier video uh, the next question would come for any person would be what is quality of life scale uh, is nothing but like say for example a patient has completed a clinical trial he has completed follow up period now he has gone at home right so during the follow up period or uh, the doctor or the principal investigator or the medical monitoring person whosoever is a delicate person to contact the patient uh, during the follow up period that person will be collecting information regarding physical are you okay are you able to do some routine activities uh, how is your emotional response being uh, being uh, being given how is your functional like say are you able to do your routine activities by on your own without being dependent on someone or are you still dependent on someone um the exact scales will anyways uh, will be defined and will always be there at the time of uh, case report uh, form uh, design and its development so in that uh, you can easily see what are the different types of scales available in your quality of life concept right 
So let's go for the second example. This is your to evaluate the effectiveness of say specific treatment immunotherapy in combination with radiation therapy for patients with intermediate high risk localized prostate cancer. Now, like I said, immunotherapy is um, kind of advanced a technique where recently it's still under research and development and there are still solutions uh, uh, trying to find out new ways to use immunotherapy as a solution in treating your uh, prostate cancer disease much faster um, and without even uh, harming your healthy cells. Now what happens is uh, when you do chemotherapy uh, like you you might you might try to kill or shrink certain cancerous cells like you know a certain section now what happens in that section or in that area of the body where you are trying to um, uh, use uh, you are trying to kill or remove the cancer cells through some radiations or radiation therapy or through some chemotherapy then what happens is uh, your nearby cells which are healthy enough they might also get damaged and those are the certain side effects so like say for example if i'm using chemotherapy near the prostate gland or uh, you know the side effect could be like erectile dysfunction would be there in male after uh, doing the chemotherapy right so it's not that everyone will will face that effect but it depends on case to case so you may have certain side effects of chemotherapy so it's not an hundred percent solution now what immunotherapy does is immunotherapy is something like say doctor will take some uh, white blood cells from your body and they will um, uh, they will uh, they will uh, take in laboratories i don't understand if from the clinical terminologies they do some magic with your uh, white blood cells uh, samples what they have taken and what they will do is that uh, that something they have done with uh, your uh, white blood cells blood that they took it from your body they did some magic and then they will try to infuse that blood in your body so what magic they will do clinically is like they will try to make your white blood cells um, much stronger to fight internally your cancerous cells and then your own blood uh, uh, like you know they will try to kill those cancerous cells so <laughs> that's what magic is but uh, like you know it's still under research and development and immunotherapy is a booming kind of um, uh, treatment uh, which we see nowadays in advanced uh, cancer but uh, there is no kind of uh, confirmed solution to it so immunotherapy what it does is it will try to kill your um, uh, it will try to kill your cancerous cells but it will not uh, have any side effects uh, around uh, around that area which are having your healthy cells got it so in chemotherapy is something they will you will have some side effects where your healthy cells uh, can be damaged right but in immunotherapy that's not the case in immunotherapy uh, they will try to only uh, kill your cancerous cells which are uh, uh, which are um, like you know unhealthy and the healthy cells they will remain as it is so the side effects are quite less uh, in immunotherapy but it's still not an 100% cure so there are various clinical trials ongoing in in this um, cancer prostate cancer but let's hope for the best that we get some treatment or some uh, cure uh, solution for this so uh, the primary endpoint would be disease free survival now how do you analyze this is time from randomization until the date of the first failure event will be compared for the treatment versus whatever placebo control arm now generally in cancer related studies placebo uh, arms are arms are uh, not used but it depends on 
what is your sponsor business requirements if they want to use they can use based on your regulatory uh, authorities uh, approval and the analysis will be based on your itt population so in this your secondary endpoints would be prostate cancer specific survival and uh, overall survival will be compared for the treatment versus the placebo then it PSA Nader will be compared for the treatment arm versus placebo. Then patient reported high health related quality of life outcomes will be collected using the expanded prostate cancer index composite questionnaire. Now, like I said, quality of life, they have certain standard questionnaires, um, be it in Parkinson's, be it in Alzheimer be it in schizophrenic, be it in delusions and hallucinations, a kind of stream. Quality of life questionnaire will be there in each and every um, uh, disease where it's related to cancer or it's related to central nervous system, right? So what happens is uh, after taking the treatment um, or after uh, taking the treatment, um, uh, during the trial, uh, uh, the the doctor wants to know uh, what is your quality of life, uh, like you know, after taking the treatment, has it improved? So these questionnaires, you need not worry about it because whenever uh, you are will be working in any any clinical trial, your questionnaires will always be there in the case report form, right? So they will have some standards which um which has been designed by the data management team in coordination with clinical and various other stakeholders sponsor or the or the medical person so so you need not worry what is this epic 26 so as and when uh, you get an opportunity to work on cancer study uh, you will get to know what are the detailed questionnaires of quality of life scales and the questions right so the change in quality of life over time will be compared for the treatment arm versus placebo. So like I said, the quality of life, there will be scales 0 to 6 or 0 to 10. So what score do you give? So that score will have certain descriptive kind of terminology. So you can, since you have a number score that 0 to 6 or 0 to 10, you can easily calculate the change in quality of life so this data is quite simple to understand then the safety profile uh, will be characterized by collection of ace information and laboratory values during the treatment phase now try to understand here is the effectiveness so effectiveness is uh, you also see the lab parameters like if there are more abnormal cases where your blood is uh, trying to show some abnormal more in certain lab parameters then obviously like you know a call will be taken whether is that treatment uh, effective or not and safety is nothing but your adverse events checking information so that's the reason the safety profile is needed right okay so in earlier over and cancer um, uh, video I had presented this graph it's like I said your analysis primary endpoints secondary endpoints will will be same like you know 90 to 95 percent somewhat here and there but uh, the picture graphs will be same because the concept is same progression free survival and the overall survival right be it over in cancer or prostate cancer or breast cancer or any cancer related uh, disease in any organ so what happens is even if i have a blood cancer i would like to see what is overall survival right i would like to see the progression free survival even if i have a breast cancer then what is the overall survival so and try to understand one thing uh, the cancer disease it could be different but your analysis it, it will be same but here and there somewhat it might change as per the sponsor and the business requirement and as you know your sponsor is your boss so depends on what sponsor wants uh, you can 
you can uh, implement those graphs so like i said there are more kaplan meier graphs there are more stepwise survival graphs so what i'll do is after this i'll try to make a presentation for sas programming or what kind of procedures are used for generating these graphs and how uh, we can use certain sas procedures in doing the statistical analysis like say pfs and ORR. So let's do it one by one. So now we have understood like what are the statistics used in prostate cancer and then we will try to move ahead with the next as the SAS programming, right? Okay, so like I said, immunotherapies, it would be almost be same uh, for across the, uh, uh, the body organ cancer that you will be having whether in ovarian or cancer so i would just like to leave up to this the immunotherapies and i would not like to go in detail in explaining the clinical terminology because that's not required right now but if anybody is interested they can go ahead and search it out in google what is the adoptive cell transfer and what are the therapeutic vaccines so that would be an added on knowledge but uh, at this stage, it's not required. It's uh, this much is enough, like, you know, where an immunotherapy is, uh, is possible for a prostate cancer. But if you are a SAS programmer or if you are a past statistician and if you are, have an interest in, in, in going to one step ahead in understanding these immunotherapies in detail from the clinical and perspective, then you can always go ahead and right here. Okay. So here I would like to thank each and every one of you for uh, watching my video and uh, stay tuned to my channel for exciting videos. Thank you.